Hey, I'm Nigeri. And I'm Franny. And, and we, we are your hardcover youth, youth producers. producers. In this episode, we will take a look back at the progress hardcover has made over the years. Now sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy today's seven. Seven hundred. Anyway. We hope you enjoy hardcovers. 700th episode! You, you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's in this position up so you can know what's up in the hood. Let's think back not too long ago when your parents, family member, or elderly person told you not to act that way, dress that way, or maybe not talk that way. Remember that older kid who thought he or she is mature because of their age and they believe that they can talk down at you? When not too long ago, your parents were having the same spiel from their parents and older siblings, which led to a cycle of bad judgment. So we ask you this, is there a difference between generations? What I perceive generations to be, of course, in itself is the time difference. You know, there's, I, I would think a generation difference is between 20 years. Um, but what people need to know is that it's much more detailed than that. There is moral, you know, ideologies or political ideologies, philosophical and religious. 
Um, so there's a lot of factors that can be compared in between generations and I believe it's my, it might be one of our most defining you know, troubles in, in society because it, it makes us you know, you know, fight over silly things or, or complicated things too, but we can learn from each other. The level of disrespect that's going on with this generation that did not go on and during the last generation, especially during my mother's, uh, one, per se, respect towards our elders. These, honestly, these kids of this era don't care. It's all about them. They feel this is their world and they can do whatever they please and that's not the case. It depends on how the world changes around you. It, like, I'm, every decade or so, we have different influence, like with music and everything. People are influenced by different things. So that influence can affect generations to generations. Like for example, we didn't grow up in a, most of us didn't grow up in a generation where people were segregated because of their race, but there still are people out here that were. I don't think age really matters in maturity because I've met um, 20 year olds that act like five year olds. I've met um, 16 year olds that um, act like they're grown adults paying taxes. Different for each person. I, I've met, I have, I have friends who are 18 or 19 or 22 and you know, very mature. They, they approach the world with you know, a lot of responsibility. Um, but I also have, have friends who don't look at life that way. I really see maturity as a way of looking on life. I do not believe that age matters in maturity at all. Um, I say so because you can meet an older person that doesn't act their age and a younger person that acts way too mature. I mean, maturity and different levels, it all depends on the personality of the person. A person should present themselves um, a certain way in a picture depending on what the picture is for. If it's like a profile picture for a modeling agency, I guess it should be um, presentable, not trashy. Um, if it's um, like a family portrait, kind of like a group picture, I mean you can be silly, you can just have it kind of like a Christmas card, I guess. It depends on what you're doing. Um, but always, if you're doing something professional, make sure it looks professional, not, you know, this is something I just did in, like, my car. Not half naked, going on for the girls' part, because some girls be half naked and they, take sel and they take selfies. I mean, we have the freedom of expression and freedom of speech, and, you know, we, we can present ourselves any way we want. We can't just fall into this norm of, of society, you know, to smile and to look happy because a lot of us are not happy or a lot of us don't want to express ourselves that way. So the way that they're good they dress more comfortably than they did a long time ago, I think. We all have different styles. Uh, so I guess it depends on what's available to you like i guess some some women will probably walk up down the street like a hoochie mama you know but it, it's the way that they want to present themselves when it comes to um young adults dressing i think think that um we dress for whatever on the whatever the new thing is like i have yet to see somebody um in last generation um dress in a 420 short or have like a giant hemp plant on it and I've yet to see somebody in this generation wearing parachute pants or something like that. At the end of the day, this is a growing time. Everything is just changing in a sense, I like to say evolving, but take note though, let's say twerking. It was brought to my attention not too long ago a lot of people, which I was, twerking came from African Americans in a sense. There was, we turned up at the party. Yeah, twerking goes back years, years, years ago. It wasn't even brought to light till about this year and last year. What the thing is though, people don't really know twerking. Everybody looked at for those who did not twerk. People looked at it as, oh, that's disgusting. That's ratchet. Oh, oh, she got no class, you know, whatever. But as soon as a skinny white girl by the name of Miley Cyrus with no booty at all, <laughs> gets to twerking on the stage, it was 
pandemonium all across the world, all through social media. For the longest, everybody was making twerk videos. White girls, black girls, Hispanic girls, Arabian girls. People used to dance and it used to be fun for everybody. But nowadays, all that, how people dance and how people uh, present themselves when they dance, it, it's not like something everybody likes. But back then, like it was something everybody enjoyed though. The, you know, like what, the tap dancing and everything, it's just something that everybody could enjoy and sit down and watch. But now pe people look, you see, I mean, people shaking their butts and stuff, but in a, in a, in a way where it's not, it's not something you would wanna like watch. In certain matters, of course. I mean, that you can say that for every generation. Um, I wouldn't say that we've been treated unfairly. No, absolutely not. If anything, we've been given so many gifts in our in our in our generation. I mean, like we have the expansion of the digital age, and we have technology, and we have computers, and we have all these amazing things. And that's not to say that other generations had technology as well. I just feel like we're more interconnected, so we're more privileged. Um, and I think one of the main problems of why people may think we are mistreated is that other generations are jealous and they're like, well, you don't know what you have and you're not grateful. And I don't think it's a matter of being grateful. We shouldn't have to be grateful that we have all this technology. I mean, in the future, our children are going to have even greater technology. So it's not fair to say or not fair to, to use against us because we can use that against our generation as well. Like our grandparents you know, started with the radio and their grandparents didn't have the radio, you know, so it's it's really an unfair situation. However, we should be open minded and not be enough and, and not fall into the susceptibility of, of you know, of uh, insulting them back. You know? We were babied a lot. I guess we were just coddled um, into thinking a certain way and everything started getting easier with my generation. Just, you know, the technology started getting more advanced, a lot of the stuff that everyone had to do back when my parents were young, you know, they didn't, I didn't have to deal with. Like for one, I work at the bank. I don't have to do a lot of the things manually. Naturally. I mean, one thing, again, I'm always going to be very careful because it's different context, but taking my family, there's a lot more freedom, but I don't know, people have different perceptions of what freedom means, but at least I mean, freedom of thought, for example. Um, I've been very lucky and not having been opposed, imposed upon by my parents, you know, I should think this, I should believe in God, I should this or that. I had the choice to decide these matters and not everyone, not the majority of people nowadays, my generation have that choice still. But I feel like there is a movement towards that. But again, with every kind of progress in that regard, there's also regression. And you see it today, I mean, how polarized the US, how how many children still grow up in a, you know, a very close society, being forced to believe this or that? Everyone is given their own piece of judgment. That's because everyone has their own opinions. But opinions are not fact. Be yourself. To those who believe that we should give up, think again. We've shown you that no matter when you are born, you are born in judgment. But no one is ever satisfied. No one is ever satisfied with who you are what you do or what you will do, but that does not mean you are any less of a person than anyone else. Community TV Network is a youth agency that teaches uh, urban young people about media, to produce their own media. After graduate school, I took a trip across the country and I was in San Francisco and I was watching TV and they had the Democratic National Convention on television and some artists had these new cameras 
And I thought that that was really interesting. I don't know, in my mind, I connected, well, wouldn't that be awesome if kids could learn that? And then they could go into their neighborhoods and, um, you know, tell stories. Well, I discovered CTVN through my friend Aaron. He told me about this uh, job he was working at, and I said I was interested. So I, I asked him if he could give me an interview, and long story short, got an interview, started working here. One of Denise's friends, Raquel, um, she introduced me to CTVN. I had a friend that first worked here, and at first, when, um, when I was in college, at first, when she first introduced me to it, I was in college. It was just, you know, to come here to keep her company, but since I was already in college doing media, my major was media and photography. When I found out about it, it, you know, interested me and I joined. After finishing film school with Columbia College, I started doing a video editing intern for a film production company, which was in the same building as CTVN. I noticed that in the building it was this other youth program thing and I became interested in it and I asked them about it and they told me, oh yeah, if you like to do stuff like that, talk to Denise. I asked this, the alternative schools where I, where I was working if they wanted a video class and then they would put their name on a waiting list and every time I raised more money I would add a school. And, and it kind of went that way. We also had uh, added after-school programs. There was probably more funding for after-school programs and for youth employment at that time than there was for in-school classes. But that's pretty much how we've always operated. If we had funding, we would hire people. Well, to be honest, I was kind of skeptical wanting to learn some, wanting to learn new techniques. Then it gave me a great opportunity to to um, focus more on working with cameras, about editing, which I am not a big fan of, uh, and acting on camera. I wanted to join CTPN because, for one thing, I wanted to have something to do when I get out of school. Wow, Hardcover is our cable show. It's Hardcover Voices and Visions of Chicago's Youth. And what happened was Chicago did not have cable because the mayor, it was, the story is that mayor, the old mayor Daley didn't want city council meetings on TV. So he didn't want cable TV to come into Chicago. And then all of a sudden, you know, Chicago felt left behind and I helped organize to have cable access, which is the part of cable TV where anybody can make, any citizen can make a TV show. And as soon as cable TV came to Chicago, I called a lady who was running the citywide teenage newspaper called New Expression News. And I said, okay, Anne, let's do it. So right when cable started in Chicago, we started our show. It was the very same time. Hardcover is a 100% produced uh, youth show by CTVN participants. It includes videos created by CTVN youth, uh, whether in high school programs or in after school programs. It'll be 30 years this summer. So it started in the summer of 86, 1986, but really it was always a vehicle to collect the videos that people were making all over the city. Well, I always worked with urban youth um, in poor neighborhoods and that was another so besides being a young person those young people in particular did not have well some not real good schools but also um, were marginalized by mainstream media before i even heard about ctv i was just like making little videos like anime music videos funny videos whatever and with CTVN, it pretty much, with CTVN, it pretty much just made me fall in love with it a little more than I already did. I had interest in video production. I honestly don't like being in front of cameras. I, I'm really impatient, so there are days when I want to, you know, do one particular thing, which is act or screenwrite. When I was in high school, I was in graphic design and you know, media was like 
my number one priority. Graphic design was my, you know, number one class. I always was very thirsty to attend that class. And so, yeah, I always had an interest in media. I did have an interest in video production before CTVN, and I think it just helped me further my interest as I started working here. Because filmmaking before that, people were making movies, and you have to send the film in. You couldn't see it. You would make a film, and then you had to send it to the developer and pay a lot of money and get it back. So kids really didn't make a lot of films. Young people didn't make films because it was very expensive. Oh, wow. CTVM. What can I say about that? I mean, it was an experience, a very good experience. What I talk to our video instructors about, our teachers, is that we are trying to empower young people. I mean, it says it in our mission statement and our hardcover guidelines, and that means learning skills, learning how to write, learning how to speak, learning how to think. I would say my experience at CTVN was more fun, you know, exciting, sometimes difficult. It was just a rocky. The question is, how do young people change going through the process of being a community TV network? We know overall, wherever we work, attendance goes up in the schools, graduation rates go up. Uh, the people here, they have talent, they got spirit, they got attitude, which is respectful, and they're not afraid to speak up for themselves. My experience at CTVN was wild. Like, <laughs> when I first joined, it was just crazy. I, 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 as me as a person, I'm not a people person. I never thought I would get along with the people that was, you know, here, but it was friendly. We all broke each other out the little shot shells and, you know, it was, it was fun. We had our disagreements with everything, but it was great, great experience. I would like to think that overall CTVN has a good impact on youth that we work with. I'm pretty sure of that, I hope. I mean, that's the whole point of it. Uh, besides just trying to provide youth with a bunch of skills, as far as filmmaking and writing and uh, collaborating like teamwork and digital video production skills and editing skills. Besides those skills, I think we always try at CTVN to encourage people to gain confidence, to get out of their shell, to make new friends, just to kind of be themselves and be confident. CTVN improved my life by teaching me a lot of things more, even more than with working with cameras. It taught me, it taught me a little, taught me a little, how can I put it? A little, a little piece of life actually. Like show me how to be in the workplace. Do I think working at CTVN changed or improved my life? Yes, it has, like it really has. I, um actually got more into photography because at a point in time at CTVN, before I started, I stopped, you know, doing photography. After I got out of high school, been out of graphic design, I stopped doing photography, stopped drawing, stopped doing anything that, you know, involved media. But after working at CTVN, I started back. CTVN had taught me how to be patient, um, how to um, learn how to edit, which I really do love. How to be in front of the camera, how to do screen write. Um, and in general, just how to open up and have a voice. Working at CTVN taught me basically unity to come together, you know, and you know, it taught me unity, respect, to come together, respect each other, you know, work together, make a better cause, you know, I go out and do something good so you know of today can have something to, you know, speak their mind on, you know, it's taught me a lot of stuff. Now I am attending my dream school, Columbia College.
I'm an acting major. Uh, from time to time, I be from time to time, I be helping film students with their cameras because had a little experience with this. So, and I get to work on camera. So. Yeah, well, now I'm working at a hospital, but I'm going to go back to school and you know further my career in media. So. In the future, I feel like I could, yeah. I can most definitely see myself like making movies and stuff. If you're watching this documentary, then, and you're not a part of the program, then you should most definitely join the program.